Hello, hello, this is Joel Hunsby with Skookum Arts, and we're here with another pedestrian behind the scenes video. This one we're going to talk about our settings for light mapping. Now I'm not going to go into detail about what all the settings do, um, or how they complete their task. What I'm going to do is show some of the tricks and tips that we kind of came across as we were light mapping. So what we've been doing is creating a scene, a separate scene called a lighting scene, used primarily for having lighting settings. Uh, normally we put our lights in there, but this is an oddball scene. So for our game, we use mixed lighting because we like a mixture of baked as well as uh, real-time shadows and mixed lights give you the best results. Uh, we use shadow masks because it's cheaper than baked indirect, but it still has all the things that we need, meaning real-time shadows. Um, Subtractive, I believe, doesn't have uh, direct light. So that's a no-go. So we use Shadow Mask. We use Enlighten over Progressive. Progressive is still in preview in the 2017 version, and we just haven't really used it a whole lot, so we, we're still using Enlighten. Our Texel Density, our Texel Resolution, rather, uh, changes from scene to scene but a lot of times we keep it around four and then the light map resolution is recommended to be 10 times higher. Right now we have it at what, 15 times higher. Um, but really you just want to play around with these settings, making them smaller to start with and then slowly building them up as you encounter problem areas that fix them. Um, the light map padding is the spacing between your objects in your light map atlas. So say we had some of this blue light from this TV shining, you know, it's, it's shining on all this stuff in the background, but what if it was also had some blue light down here? Well, that means that that blue light in the UVs are right next to each other. All right, this, this blue light and that wall are right next to each other. And so they're bleeding onto each other. What you can do is you can increase, you can increase the padding size to give things a little bit more space and hopefully reduce some of that bleeding. Um, everything else is roughly default. I think we upped the light map size. But that's all roughly default settings. You can look up what each of those do. Um, for looking at objects, getting objects set up for light mapping, uh, what we do is we set things as static or light map static. The difference is this sets everything under the sun as static, so it's light map static, occluder, batching, navigation, blah blah blah, all that stuff. So if you don't want all that, if you still want to be able to move it or have, um, or have it not batched or whatever, you can just go and check light map static specifically. Um, if we quickly go over into the do, 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 baked light map view mode, you can see our light map and all the little texels and boxes. So these are the resolution or representation of the resolution of your light maps. You can change it on an object per object basis by upping or lowering the scale in light map. And you can change it on a scene by scene basis by upping the resolution. So that's what this resolution is. It's, it's just increasing the whole scene. I'm gonna take that back down. But on an object per object basis, you can go into the inspector under the mesh renderer, under light map settings, and change the scale and light map. I'm gonna keep it at one. Typically you want to start low and then increase it as you as you need it, I guess. Um, our game has a very controlled, strict path. You know, you go from sign to sign, so we always know where the player is gonna be and what they're gonna see. So we can make this wall, you know, super high, like maybe, okay, not that high. So let's not go crazy here. 
but it could be higher. And then we can make this back wall, which probably should be a lot lower. Just for time's sake. We can make that a lot lower, like maybe 0.3 or 0.4. And that'll increase our baking speed and generally keep the quality of the game roughly the same. So make sure you're prioritizing your where you're putting a resolution. Um, everything can't have resolution, otherwise you're going to have like a four or five, six hour bake. Um, so yeah, try to try to keep the good stuff, the close priority target gets higher and the lower ones lower. One thing that we've kind of run into over the years is uh, keeping things uniform in scale. Like if you look at this object, its scale is all over the place. You know, we have 50.4 and then 18. So you can see on the baked light map, all the boxes are stretched. And so in order to get a decent bake on it, you have to have a pretty high resolu or scale. That's why we have it at three. Um, because everything's stretched, our resolution is being stretched, and the boxes are bigger than they should be. So if you want to avoid running into various problems, try to keep things in a uniform scale. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be 111, but as long as it's 1.7, 1.7, 1.7, like they're all the same. That's that's what you want. And also trying to keep um, the world at a decent uh, scale realistically like let's say one unity meter so we pull a cube in one unity unit should equal one meter or something along those lines so that you don't have just massively overblown worlds because that really messes up the light maps uh, we've run into problems with um, you know buildings in the background being super big and just having horrible problems with their light maps um, so if you try to keep things um, within a, a decent size, uh, you'll, you'll avoid those problems. If you have some artifact issues, meaning things like, say this, this little corner probably shouldn't be darker than the rest of it. You know, our light is coming from right above it, so this corner, if anything, should be the brightest corner but what that is doing is objects are bleeding into each other it means the UV islands are too close to each other so light or shadow from one bleeds into the light or shadow from the other one so this corner is supposed to be lit but the island next to it is probably supposed to be in shadow like maybe it's over here or something it's all in shadow the shadow part is leaking over into the light part of this one making this have this weird artifact all you have to do is either if you have custom UVs for this go and give them a bit more space or you can go into the import settings so let's click on our object click on our mesh and go to the import settings and generate light map UVs. So this will make UVs separate from your albedo or color UVs. So all the texture, the color, that's all on one UV. This is a completely separate UV that the light map system uses. And there are a couple settings here. Um, but the one that we want to look at right now is pack margin. This indicates how closely packed all of the little islands are. So I believe it defaults to 4, but if we want to raise this up to say 12, that'll give all of our islands a lot more space and prevent some of this bleeding. So if I was to regenerate light map, You can see after the bake, all of those burn marks and bleeding is gone. 
So it all looks basically how it should. Some other stuff that we run into, uh, make sure that your planes or your like one-sided objects, make sure that they have two-sided cast shadows on. Because right now, the normals for this plane is pointing downward. And the sun, or whatever your light is, is probably coming from above. And so that light will just assume that there's nothing there and just cast through your ceiling. But if you have two-sided, it'll block it still. So make sure you do that if you run into that situation. And sometimes just lights just tend to be quirky. They don't work the way you think they should. They don't cast shadows. They whatever it is. Um, so sometimes you just have to delete a light and replace it with a new one. Um, type in the new settings, make sure, I guess first check to make sure your mode is the way you think it is. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta start over. Overall, if you want your scene brighter, increase the, increase the indirect intensity. So that will make the bounces more intense so it'll create an overall uh, more lit scene like this scene's pretty decently bright for only having these few lights in it um, also has to do with the ambient but you can do the same thing by increasing the indirect intensity that'll make the bounces better and it'll just overall fill out your scene so those are kind of some of the little tidbits of, of knowledge that we have come across when light mapping our game. We're still no ex experts, and this scene is definitely not done, but it's a work in progress. And thank you guys so much for listening, and please follow us on all of our socials, and we'll catch you next week.